Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for watching this Kibo Cube Academy on demand pre recorded lecture. This is lecture number 14 Introduction to CubeSat Attitude Control System. My name is Toshinori Kuwahara, Associate Professor at the Department of Aerospace Engineering of Tohoku University, Japan, and also the chairperson of UNISEC Japan. My research topics are space development, utilization, and exploration by small spacecraft technologies. Now let's start the lecture. Here is the overview of this presentation. First, I will start with an introduction to actual control system and move on to CubeSat actual control mode, hardware components of actual control system, actual determination and control process, actual determination and control algorithms, and functional verification of actual control system for concluding my presentation. The first chapter is an introduction to the actual control system. First of all, let's take a look at the requirements of the satellite actual control system. The actual control system, or just ACS, is one of the satellite subsystems which is responsible for determination and control of the satellite attitude. ACS is sometimes denoted as attitude determination and control system or just ADCS. In general, attitude control of the satellite is required not only to achieve mission objectives, but also to survive in the space environment, mainly in terms of the power generation and thermal control of the entire satellite. Payload instruments of small satellites are usually mechanically fixed to the satellite body, and hence the satellite attitude itself needs to be controlled in order to point those instruments towards the desired directions. Attitude control modes and accuracy depend on each satellite's mission objectives. There are three uh, typical actual control requirements of satellites. The first is detumbling control, which is to detumble the rotational rate of the satellite body, especially after the separation from the launch vehicle or release from the International Space Station. The second is pointing control, which is to point the spacecraft attitude toward a certain direction for observation and or communication purposes with the ground station. And the last is a spinning control, where the spin up is required to achieve a spin stabilization of the satellite. To understand ACS better, let's study the dynamics of CubeSat in space. The dynamic motion control of a CubeSat can be treated as the combination of translational motion control and rotational motion control. Dynamics problems of translational motion and rotational motion can be treated separately from the mathematical point of view. The orbital motion is referred to as a translational motion as it has uh, these characteristics. Satellite is regarded as a point of mass, which means that the motion of the center of mass of the spacecraft is discussed in the translational motion analysis. The orbital motion needs to be determined by uh, means of ground observations or onboard instruments. A satellite's orbital motion can be propagated based on orbital mechanics. Perturbation effects acting on satellites need to be estimated for precise orbit propagation. And orbital parameters such as altitude, inclination, etc., need to be controlled through uh, orbital maneuvers by means of thrusters if required. For the rotational motion or the attitude motion analysis, 
the spacecraft attitude around its center of mass is handled separately from the orbital motion. Satellite attitude need to be determined by onboard sensor instruments and controlled by onboard actuator instruments by generating uh, attitude control torques. Furthermore, the satellite attitude is controlled relative to the target attitude and rotational rate. The control process for motion of a spacecraft can be described in the following three steps, navigation, guidance, and control. The figure on the right illustrates the analogous situation on Earth. To reach the target place on Earth, you will need navigation in order to know uh, where you are currently located, then guidance in order to know where to go, and then control in order to know uh, how you proceed along the way to the goal. And you will repeat these steps until you finally arrive at the goal. Satellite control can be understood in a similar way. The first step is navigation. This step is to determine the current position and velocity of the satellite for the orbital motion analysis as well as the satellite attitude and rotational rate for the attitude motion analysis. This is also illustrated in the right figure. The second step is the guidance, which is to calculate the desired target position and velocity for the orbital motion and the desired target attitude and rotational rate for attitude motion in order to achieve the mission objectives. And the third and last step is control. In the control step, changes are made in the position and velocity of the spacecraft for the orbital motion, as well as the attitude and rotational rate of the spacecraft for attitude motion, or even to keep them to certain fixed values by means of actuators. These three important steps GMC, guidance, navigation, and control, are processes which need to be conducted repeatedly and continuously. The resulting control accuracy is influenced by the accuracy in each of these steps. In this next slide, I'd like to introduce the relationship between orbital motion and attitude motion. In the figure below, the influence of orbital motion to attitude motion is described by the red characters, and the influence of attitude motion to orbital motion is in blue. So let's take a look at them one by one. In the case uh, where the satellite is rotating around the Earth, the orbital motion of the spacecraft results in the change of target direction as illustrated here. And when you conduct an orbital maneuver using thrusters, as illustrated in this figure, it also affects the spacecraft attitude at the same time. So you need to take into account this perturbation inference to the spacecraft attitude as well, while you conduct any orbital maneuver. Then on the contrary, satellite attitude control using a reaction uh, control system based on thrusters also influences the orbital propagation of the satellite as well. Additionally, the uh, magnitude of solar pressure and the Earth's atmospheric drag acting on the surface of the satellite are influenced by the satellite attitude and consequently affects the orbital motion. In this way, the orbital motion and attitude motion influence each other. And therefore, 
orbital information is required for the attitude analysis. And uh, attitude information is required for the orbital analysis as well. So the main topic of this lecture is the attitude control system. You can understand now uh, that uh, it is closely related with the orbit control system. This slide illustrates the relationship of satellite subsystems. As indicated in the figure, the attitude control system and the orbital control system are sometimes treated as a separate subsystems or they are treated as a single subsystem, referred to as the attitude and orbit control system, or just the AOCS. For system integration and the systems engineering of satellite, it is very important to identify the boundaries between the subsystems and the interfaces between them, as well as their components. The combination of all subsystems, except the payload system, are denoted as the satellite bus system. And it is also very important to understand the relationship between the payload and the bus system. This next slide illustrates an exemplary satellite system block diagram, which includes the actual control system and orbit control system. In this way, the satellite system architecture can be described using a system block diagram. Also, satellite components can be categorized into subsystems according to their functionalities. From the diagram, you can understand that there are many onboard satellite components which belong to the actual control system and orbit control system. Each of these interfaces need to be specified, controlled, integrated, and tested for the satellite system integration. From the left top to bottom right side, the other subsystem illustrated in this figure are the communication system, power supply system, command and data handling system, payroll system. In some cases, the main computer might be connected to primitive actual determination sensors and actuators, such as magnetometers, sun sensors, magnetic torques, and GPS receivers, etc., as indicated in this diagram. In this case, the actual control computer can be turned off while precise actual determination and control is not required so that the satellite can minimize the power consumption. In this slide, I have shown you two examples of actual control methods for Earth observation. The left-hand side figure is illustrating a so-called push broom observation, which is often used for Earth observations by relatively larger spacecraft in a scanning observation mode, as illustrated in this animation. In this type of control, the attitude motion of the satellite can be kept slow and the observation area can be wider and longer. These are the merits of this observation method. On the contrary, the exposure time tends to be short because of the fast orbital motion relative to the surface of the ground. The right-hand side figure illustrates the step-stair observation method with target pointing attitude control. The merit of this method is that we can extend the exposure time to get the better signal to noise ratio. This means we can obtain a better ground sampling distance. However, the challenge in this observation method is that the attitude control needs to be more accurate and agile. Also, the observation area tends to become smaller. The point of the uh, comparison of these two methods is that for the actual control system design, 
engineers need to conduct careful trade-offs between the actual control system functionalities, observation capabilities, and the project budget, such as the schedule and development cost, etc. As an, an example of a satellite actual control method, this figure illustrates a multi-spectral observation with target pointing actual control, which was uh, demonstrated by the microsatellite LiveSat developed by Toho University. This video is showing the satellite attitude conducting target pointing observation while it flies over the observation target around Sendai City, Japan, in order to achieve a long exposure time for the target observation with different wavelengths. Doing so, allows the combination of some of the wavelengths to generate meaningful scientific data after the observation. This is illustrated on the right-hand side figure. I hope that you could get an idea of how the attitude uh, control of satellites takes place. In this next chapter, let me now introduce the CubeSat actual control modes. It is often the case that uh, satellites need to be capable of performing specific actual control modes in order to achieve mission objectives. There are a variety of possible actual control modes for satellites. Usually a satellite is equipped with uh, several actual control modes and the mode transitions between them are carefully designed in order to ensure safety and stable satellite operation in space. From time to time, these need to be uh, autonomous. For the attitude control, attitude determination is also necessary beforehand. Therefore, attitude determination sensors and attitude control actuators are required in general. There are two types of attitude control, a passive and active controls. And there are many different kinds of attitude control modes. They are detampering control, which uh, detumbles the satellite rotational velocity after the separation from the launch vehicle or release from the ISS. Gravity gradient control using passive gravitational torque acting on the satellite spin stabilization control, and three axis control, including pointing control such as inertial, nadia target, and velocity direction pointing, and so on. In the following slides, I'd like to elaborate about the actual control mode. One of the most important actual control modes is the detumbering control. Satellites can experience a high rotational rate after the separation from the launch vehicle or release from the ISS. In general, satellites in a high-speed rotation cannot communicate with the ground station properly. So satellites shall be able to detumble and reduce the rotational speed down to about several degrees per second at the maximum. There are two types of detumbering controls active control and passive control. For the active control in general, you generate a magnetic moment by means of magnetic talkers to interact with the Earth's magnetic field, actively slowing down the rotational rate. This is illustrated in the figure. For the passive control, you utilize permanent magnets and the magnetic hysteresis dampers to passively slow down the rotational rate. This picture is an example of a magnetic torque. Another interesting actual control method is the gravity, gravity gradient control. The gravity gradient control belongs to passive control category. So satellites with long shapes and the spread mass distribution experience a gravity gradient 
torque such that the longitudinal direction points towards the Earth. The cameras, antennas, and sensors can be pointed toward the Earth without additional electrical power or the actual control. But the pointing accuracy is relatively low. This can also be combined with active actual control with some actual control actuators, such as magnetic torques and reaction wheels. The last example of actual control is the active three axis actual control. Actual control actuators, such as magnetic torques and reaction wheels, are used for active three axis control. And specifically, the action wheels can realize agile and stable actual control. This is shown in the animation. Through three axis actual control, you can point your camera instruments toward the observation target. You can then obtain this kind of image by your satellite. Disturbance torques acting on the satellite gradually accumulate as angular momentum stored in the reaction wheels. And therefore, reaction wheels cannot be operated for a long time without desaturation using magnetic torques. Also, I need to mention that uh, for this method of actual control, the satellite actual shall be determined uh, precisely by means of a combination of actual determination sensors. This slide illustrates the implemented actual control modes of a spacecraft and their state transition diagram. This is an example of the microsatellite RideSat developed by Tohoku University. For the actual control system design, engineers need to identify what kind of actual control modes are required to achieve the mission objectives of the satellite. Those actual control modes need to be combined in a state machine diagram as illustrated in this slide. Together with the mode transition uh, conditions between them. Mode transition can be triggered either by the telecommand sent from the ground station or autonomously, uh, autonomously based on the internal parameters by the onboard computers such as uh, satellite angular velocity. So in this example, the automatic mode transitions are implemented between safe mode and detumbling mode. In this example, if the angular velocity becomes bigger than five degrees per second, the satellite uh, autonomously and automatically starts the detumbling mode to detumble the rotational velocity in order to achieve stable satellite operation. And if the angular velocity becomes lower than 0 0.2 degrees per second, it becomes uh, comes back to the safe mode automatically. In this way, you need to carefully analyze the required spacecraft attitude mode and state machines. In the next chapter, I'd like to introduce the hardware components of the actual control system. So actual control system or ACS requires actual determination sensors, actual control actuators and onboard computers. In general, a satellite can have a dedicated computer for the ACS or ACS functionalities can be spread into several onboard computers. ACS requires a lot of onboard components and significant efforts are needed for the verification. You need to pay attention to the fact that the definition of their requirements and make or buy decisions have considerable or impact on the project progress and mission success.
in this slide, I have summarized the actual determination sensors. These are the sensors commonly used for satellite actual determination. The first one is the magnetometer, which measures the magnetic field. The second one covers a family of sun sensors, including the coarse sun sensor and fine sun sensor. These uh, sun sensors measure the sun vector. The next sensor is an earth sensor, which measures the earth vector or the direction of the earth center. A GPS receiver is used to obtain time information such as UTC information and satellite position and velocity. The next sensor is a star tracker, which directly determines the satellite attitude in the internal uh, inertial coordinate. And the last one is the gyro sensor, which measures the angular velocity or angular rate of the satellite. As indicated in this diagram, the first set of these sensors are used to determine the satellite attitude by combining their obtained data. The star tracker can determine the satellite attitude alone, and therefore, out of these sets of sensors, we can obtain the satellite attitude information. For the attitude propagation or attitude estimation indi uh, indicated at the right, we need uh, not only the attitude information of the satellite, but also the angular velocity, which can be measured directly by gyro sensors or derived from the attitude information by taking its time derivative. We need to combine these parameters in order to determine the satellite attitude in the onboard computer. In the following slides, I'd like to introduce the attitude determination sensors one by one. The first one is the magnetometer, also known as a geomagnetic aspect sensor. Magnetometers measure the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. It is used to determine the attitude of the satellite by comparing the measured value and the calculated Earth's magnetic field model at the position of the satellite. Since uh, it is affected by the magnetic field generated by the satellite itself, it is necessary to check whether there are any devices that consume a large current in the neighborhood of the sensor and whether the residual magnetic uh, moment of the satellite is small enough. It is uh, beneficial that uh, magnetic field information is available for low Earth orbit satellites all the time. So it is especially necessary to know the direction of the Earth's magnetic field for actual control using magnetic torques. Some magnetometers have analog outputs and some have digital outputs. The next sensor is the coarse sun sensor, also called a sun aspect sensor. Small solar cells or photodiodes can be used as a coarse sun sensor. The amount of uh, power generated by the uh, sensors changes according to the angle of incidence of sunlight, which is converted into voltage for the measurement. By measuring the ratio of six sensors on each surface of the satellite that are orthogonal to the three axis, uh, the direction of the sun can be determined with uh, close accuracy with several degrees. It is very robust and stable, and it has a wide, wide field of view and can cover the entire sky. In the right-hand side of this slide, an implementation example in the case of Microsat like ISAT is illustrated. 
The next one is the uh, fine sun sensor. Fine sun sensors can detect the sun's direction very accurately. There are various uh, principles such as uh, slit type and pinhole type. The field of view is narrow and it is necessary to mount uh, multiple sensors to cover the entire sky. In the example illustrated in the figure on the right, two sets of solar uh, sensors are mounted on the upper and lower surfaces of the satellite, each of them having a pair of two sun sensors in order to cover the entire sky. If the attitude of the satellite uh, to the sun is uh, restricted in advance, it can be uh, handled by a reduced number of sun sensors. Sun sensors can only be used in the sunshine area. The next sensor is the earth sensor. Some earth sensors use optical instruments to to determine the direction of the Earth's center by detecting the rims of the Earth, while others use heat-sensitive sensors, such as sound piles. In low Earth orbit, Earth exists too close to the satellite to determine the direction accurately, and hence Earth sensor is not uh, widely used. The figure on the right is an example of an earth sensor implementation using sound piles, which is still under investigation at Tohok University. There is a demand for detecting the uh, geocentric direction, even with course accuracy, especially in the eclipse side of the earth, as you cannot have information about the sun vector. The next sensor is the star tracker, also called a star sensor. A star tracker developed by Tohoku University is illustrated in the right hand side picture. Star trackers take images of star constellations and compare them with the internal star catalog information to determine the attitude of the sensor relative to the uh, inertial coordinate. The satellite attitude can be directly determined by a single sensor very precisely. After successfully uh, detecting the attitude at the beginning when the power is turned on, which is called a uh, lost in space situation, the star tracker tracks and follows the identified stars to keep determining the satellite attitude. The required exposure time is relatively long, which is typically several hundreds of milliseconds to get clear star images, uh, which limits the processing speed and sensor data output frequency. The challenge is to perform a catalog matching process as fast as uh, possible inside the sensor in order to reduce the data latency it is necessary to design the lifetime of the sensor in consideration of the deterioration of the sensor over time and the increase of white pixels. By uh, blocking the intrusion of ambient light using a buffer, the satellite's activity region can be expanded and flexible operation can be realized. Note that attitude uh, cannot be detected by star trackers when the angular velocity of the satellite is too high. The next sensor is the GPS receiver and antenna. GPS receivers can also be used in low Earth orbit in space. A GPS receiver provides information such as time in UTC, and PPS per second. And satellite position, satellite velocity, etc. Since the uh, relative velocity is faster in orbit, 
done on the ground, it is necessary to use a GPS receiver designed for space use. For satellites whose attitude may be uh, oriented in any direction, it is better to mount a receiving antenna on the upper and lower surfaces of the satellite so that GPS signals can be received uh, regardless of the attitude. Antennas on the upper and lower surfaces can be coupled as a single antenna, as illustrated in the right figure. It is better to select a GPS that has a short acquisition time after the power on. Onboard processing of GPS data needs to pay attention to leap years as well. The last sensor is the angular rate, or angular velocity sensor. The first one I will introduce is the fiber optic gyroscope, or just FOG. FOG is a high precision angular velocity sensor used for microsatellites. Optical fiber is used inside and the device lifetime shall be evaluated by paying attention to the optical uh, deterioration due to the radiation effect. Several degrees of accuracy can be achieved even after about one hour of numerical integration. The second one I will introduce is the MEMS gyro sensor. It is a middle precision angular velocity sensor used for microsatellites. Since uh, it has excellent durability and a small form factor, it is suitable for uh, building a redundant system or for use as a backup in the event of failure. When using FOG, it is recommended to install MEMS gyro sensor as well for redundancy. The next group is the attitude control actuators. This slide illustrates the families of the attitude control actuators. These are magnetic torquers, reaction wheels, control moment gyroscope, or just CMG, and reaction control system, or just RCS, based on thrusters. The magnetic torquers and reaction control system generates external torques, while reaction wheels and control momentum uh, gyroscopes generate internal torques. For CubeSats, the first two actuators uh, which are magnetic torquers and reaction wheels are commonly used for actual control. Reaction wheels and CMG can utilize uh, internal torques generated from uh, rotating elements inside of them. The external disturbance torques acting on satellites are accumulated in forms of the angular momentum inside loaded on the rotational elements. This load needs to be uh, desaturated using actuators, which can generate external torques for a long operation time. Satellite attitude can also be controlled using uh, only actuators with uh, external torques as well, such as uh, magnetic torques. In the following slides, I'd like to introduce the actual control actuators one by one. The first actuator is the magnetic torquer. A magnetic torquer is a device that can generate a magnetic moment by electrical uh, current. The generated magnetic moment interacts with the Earth's magnetic field, resulting in external torque acting on the satellite. It can only be used uh, in space where a magnetic field exists. Therefore, it cannot be used in lunar orbit, for example, as there is no magnetic field. It is common that a spacecraft is equipped with three magnetic torquers in each axis so that the satellite can generate the desired magnetic moment for three axis actual control. 
It is also used for the detampering control of the satellite's rotational velocity, especially after the separation from the launch vehicle or release from the International Space Station, as I mentioned. The tampering can be achieved by a fewer number of magnetic torques as well. The next actuator is the reaction wheel. A reaction wheel contains a rotating wheel inside and makes it possible to control the attitude of the satellite by the reaction effects of the rotation. Internal torque can be generated electro electronically and no propellant is needed, unlike thrusters. So in many cases, about one to four units will be installed in a satellite according to the mission requirements. The performance of reaction wheels is explained by the magnitude of output torque and uh, the maximum angular momentum that can be accumulated. The internal wheel can be rotated in either the positive or negative direction. The wheel stops once when the direction of rotation changes. This situation is called zero cross. And when this happens, both the accuracy of the actual control and the lifetime of the uh, internal mechanical elements decreases. When aiming for long-term use by uh, preventing uh, deterioration of bearings, it is necessary to avoid uh, zero cross in operation as much as possible. There is a practical upper limit of the rotational speed of the internal wheel, such as up to around 3,000 RPM and so on. The next one I introduce is the reaction control system or RCS. RCS is an actual control system which utilizes several sets of thrusters. RCS requires a propellant, and hence the amount of propellant limits the device lifetime. The same set of thrusters of RCS could also be used for controlling orbit, depending on their uh, alignment. A pair of two thrusters are required in order to generate only torque without generating translational thrust. This picture is an example of microsatellite AL2, which was implemented with four RCS thrusters. There are different kinds of thrusters available for RCS, such as cold gas thruster, hot gas thruster, resistor jet thruster, ion thruster, etc. We will now move on to the next chapter where I will explain the actual determination and control process. The actual determination and control process can be divided into several steps, which are executed one after another in a periodical manner, continuously. The process consists of uh, processing sensor data, orbit determination, attitude determination, guidance, attitude control calculation, and generation of attitude control command packets sent to the actuator hardware, as illustrated in this figure. The outputs from the actuators change the satellite attitude by interacting with the space environment through satellite attitude dynamics. The sensors again measure the physical parameters of the updated situation in the next time step. The orbit and attitude determination belong to the navigation process as discussed before. And for the calculation inside onboard computer, the environmental parameters need to be processed digitally. So processing of sensor data is required to convert sensor output information to those digital uh, variables. The commands for the actuators need to be calculated 
out of the result of attitude uh, control calculations inside onboard computer. So actuators have limitations in performance, such as uh, maximum torque or the direction of the torque which can be generated. And therefore, commands need to be generated in a meaningful manner in order to increase the efficiency of the driving electrical power or thrust appropriate. This diagram illustrates an example of a detailed attitude determination and control process over satellite. You can see that orbit calculation and attitude calculation are related to each other, and they are classified into a navigation part followed by a guidance part and control part connected in this order. In the following slides, I'd like to discuss each of the processing steps of the attitude determination and control. Our first topic is uh, attitude determination. The following information shall be available for attitude determination. So time information. So time information can be obtained from the GPS receiver or from the onboard uh, real-time clock or RTC. Orbital position. So orbital position can be obtained from the GPS receiver or mathematical integration inside onboard computer based on the uh, orbital mechanics. So TLE or two line element information can also be used for this purpose. Attitude determination calculation requires comparison between the measured physical parameters and estimation with space environmental models such as sun direction magnetic field direction, earth direction, and so on. For the sensor data processing, the processing timing shall be designed very carefully. This diagram is indicating an example of implementation of the processing timing of the actual determination. Usually sensor data output uh, periods are uh, depending on the devices. For example, a star tracker has lower output frequency than gyro sensors. Also, some outputs from sensors often correspond to situations of the past. For example, attitude information output from star trackers are based on the time when the star images are acquired in the past. In those cases, we need to calculate uh, backwards to determine the satellite attitude at that time in the past. And then we need to numerically integrate uh, to get the current updated attitude information using the rotational velocity information stored in memory. This kind of back and forward calculation is necessary when you want to achieve a very high attitude determination accuracy. Also, it is very important that the timing of these sensors outputs are carefully managed by the onboard computers. For this purpose, it is often the case that the pulse per second or PPS signal output from uh, GPS receivers are distributed to the onboard peripheral sensor devices so that they can be synchronized with this signal. The next step is the guidance. Before the attitude control processing, the target attitude of the satellite needs to be calculated. The target attitude and the rotation rate and their precision uh, depends on the mission objectives. There are a variety of uh, target attitude definitions based on the mission objectives. So attitude determination and control is usually discussed relative to the inertial coordinate system. There are several different types of pointing control as below. So inertial pointing mode. The spacecraft attitude is controlled in the way that uh, it is fixed to a certain direction of the inertial coordinate system. It is often used for star observation. 
the Nadia pointing mode. The spacecraft attitude is controlled uh, in the way that a certain axis keeps pointing to the Earth or a certain a celestial body's center direction. It is often used for Earth surface observations in a scanning mode. The target attitude rotate with time based on the relative motion of the Earth and the satellite. The ground target pointing mode. The spacecraft attitude is controlled in the way that a certain axis keeps pointing to a certain target object on the Earth's surface. It is often used for Earth observation in a pointing mode or for high-speed communication between the satellite and target ground station. In the following two slides, I'd like to show you uh, two examples of navigation for different kinds of satellite attitude control. Our first example is the navigation for the Nadia pointing control. So in this example, the target coordinate system is defined in the way that the corresponding body axis points toward the Earth's center. This is illustrated in this figure below. For this definition, the position vector of the satellite are sat. Relative to the Earth's center is used to determine the third axis of the target coordinate system first, which is indicated as T3. Then in this example, the second vector T2 is defined in the way that it's perpendicular to the orbital plane. And then the T1 is determined in the way that it is uh, orthogonal to both of these two vectors. The body coordinate system is controlled in the way that it overlaps with the defined target coordinate to achieve the pointing of these sensor instruments for the Earth center. As illustrated in this figure, for this calculation, we often use cross products of vectors. The second example is the navigation for the target pointing control. The target coordinate system is defined in the way that the corresponding body axis points toward the specific target located on the Earth's surface. In this example, the target position moves with the time together with the Earth's rotation. As indicated in this example, the target can be set at an arbitrary position in space in general. This kind of reference coordinate system can be designed using available vector information, such as uh, the position vector of the spacecraft, velocity vector, position vector of the target position, and so on. For the attitude determination and control purpose, we need to understand the relationship between the inertial coordinate system and the geodetic coordinate system as the Earth is rotating relative to the inertial frame, as illustrated in the figure below. The inertial coordinate system, or often called the Earth-centered inertial coordinate system, is indicated in red, which is fixed with space. The geodetic coordinate system, which is often called uh, ECEF, Earth-centered Earth fixed system, is, in, is indicated in blue, uh, which is fixed with the Earth and rotates together with the Earth. For example, longitude and latitude information is uh, defined relative to the ECEF coordinate system. The Earth's uh, magnetic field is rotating with the Earth and needs to be described in ECEF as, a, as well. On the contrary, the direction of the sun, moon, and so on are described against the ECI system, generally speaking. 
So understanding the relative motion of the geodetic coordinate system and uh, inertial coordinate system, and hence the coordinate transformation matrix between them is very important. This slide illustrates the coordination transformation between the ECF and ECI. Earth's rotation actually consists of several different motions, such as rotation, mutation, and precision. All of these effects need to be taken into account for a precise coordinate transformation between the ECEF and ECI. For example, a GPS receiver usually delivers position in an ECEF coordinate, and then you need to transform that information back to the ECI coordinate in order to determine the position of the satellite in space in an ECI coordinate. This is the last slide of this chapter. The last step is the attitude control. The current attitude error is measured by uh, comparing the target coordinate system and the current body coordinate system. An attitude control torque is generated in the way that the attitude error decreases in order to achieve the desired attitude. Accuracy of the attitude control depends on the accuracy of attitude determination. Usually, the attitude determination accuracy shall be more than 10 times better than the desired attitude control accuracy. The limitation of the performance of the actuators and their mechanical uh, alignment and orientation shall be taken into account when generating the actual commands sent to the hardware components. Spacecraft attitude can be controlled both in, uh, by in internal uh, forces such as torque generated by reaction wheels and external forces, such as the torque generated by uh, magnetic torquers and thrusters. Now let's take a close look at the attitude determination and control algorithms from the mathematical point of view in this next chapter. So satellite motion can be described as a combination of kinematics and dynamics. Attitude kinematics uh, describes the relationship between the rotational rate and the resulting satellite attitude. Therefore, uh, measuring the angular velocity is necessary in order to numerically propagate the satellite attitude. This is illustrated in this figure. In addition to this, an attitude control moment or torque acting on the satellite can affect the angular rate through the satellite dynamics. As a result, the satellite attitude can be integrated with the updated angular velocity information for the next time step. The attitude of spacecraft can be described in several different ways. The most commonly used three examples are described below. DCM, the directional uh, cosine matrix, Euler angles, and quaternions. As illustrated in this diagram, these mathematical descriptions represent the attitude description method, respectively. While uh, there is only one way of uh, representing the DCM, there are multiple ways of uh, description, uh, variations available for the other types of description method. These three representations are interchangeable through the DCM. In the following slides, I'd like to explain each of these description methods briefly. Let's start from the direction cosine matrix or DCM, which is also called a coordinate transformation matrix. We start from the definition of a body coordinate system, which is indicated by uh, FB, system B, 
and also the reference coordinate system indicated by FA here, uh, system A, as illustrated on the right. So here, the body coordinate system is a system which is fixed with the satellite body. The direction cosine matrix can be uh, described in the form of a three by three matrix as described below in this equation. Each element of this matrix is called a direction cosine uh, between the components of each coordinate systems basis vectors. And therefore, this matrix is called a direction cosine matrix. This is also known as a coordinate transformation matrix. Information in the reference coordinate system can be transformed to the body coordinate system or vice versa using this coordinate transformation matrix. This is indicated here in the form of C B over A, indicating that this is a coordinate transformation matrix from the system A to system B. The next one is the Euler angles. Single rotation motion of a spacecraft can be decomposed into three consequent rotations around three rotational axes. These three rotation uh, angles around three axes are called Euler angles. The rotation angles are intuitively understandable in three dimensional space. There are 24 different ways of selecting the rotational axis, and there are several uh, commonly used ones among them. And Euler angles uh, calculation uses trigonometric functions. Some of the commonly uh, used sets of Euler angles are listed below. The three to one system is a rotation around the Z, Y, and X axis in this order. And the one to three system is a rotation around X, Y, and Z axis in this order which is also known as roll, pitch, your rotation. Let's take a look at the example of Euler angles in the one, two, three system. So in this definition, the first rotation is around the first axis, which is the X axis for the angle of theta one. This is also called a roll angle. The second rotation is about the Y axis for the angle of theta two, which is called a pitch angle. And then the third rotation is around the Z axis uh, for the angle of theta three, which is called a yo angle. The rotational order is around the X, Y, Z axis or one, two, three axis. The rotational matrix to be a match applied to system A can be described uh, in this way as described in this equation. The first rotation to be multiplied is located in the rightmost position, C1, theta1. And then the second rotation comes to the next position, which is C2, theta2. The third rotation is located at the leftmost position of this uh, multiplication, such as C3, theta3, in this mathematical equation. You can also remember that the coordinate transformation between system A to system B can be indicated by C, B over A as discussed in the previous slides. So if you compare these two equations, you can also extract the relationship between the direction cosine matrix and Euler angles represent representation, which is in this case in the one to three system as described here. The third example is the quaternions. The quaternion represented by Q is based on four Euler parameters, which is indicating the rotation around the rotational axis 
also known as Euler axis. In the figure on the right, I have illustrated the relationship between the reference coordinate and body coordinate systems. Euler axis of rotation and rotation angle theta around the Euler axis. Any displacement of the satellite attitude can be described as a single rotation around a specific axis or a specific angle, as indicated in this figure. These Q1 to Q4 parameters are the so-called Euler parameters. If you take the summation of these terms, it becomes one. So quaternion Q is then described in the vector form using these four parameters. Quaternion doesn't have a singularity problem and is a very useful description used for satellite attitude representation. In this slide, I have summarized the characteristics of each attitude description method. The first one is the direction cosine matrix, or DCM, also known as coordinate transformation matrix. As we saw in the previous slides, DCM is a simple representation with a three by three matrix. We need only simple numerical calculations which is suitable for on both computers. And it has no singularity point. Some drawback using DCM is that it has a three by three and in total nine parameters, which makes it difficult to imagine the spacecraft attitude intuitively and instantaneously. Next is the Euler angles. Euler angles uh, make intuitively understanding the satellite attitude easy. And it also needs uh, only three parameters. These are the merits using Euler angles. However, calculating Euler angles requires uh, trigonometric function calculations, which is not suitable for onboard uh, computers. And also Euler angle uh, definitions have singularity points. And furthermore, there are 24 different ways of representing Euler angles. The third one is quaternions. So quaternions need only four parameters and it has no singularity points. These features make it suitable for onboard computers as there are less uh, trigonometric functions, but it is still difficult to imagine the satellite attitude uh, intuitively. According to these characteristics, quaternions are usually widely used for the satellite attitude representation. And then uh, directional cosine matrix and Euler angles are used to uh, reproduce necessary information for the understanding of the satellite operator or for specific uh, attitude control purposes. When you have learned about the attitude description method, the next step is to understand the attitude kinematics. Attitude kinematics is the relationship between the angular rotational velocity and the uh, time derivative of the attitude description method. So in this slide, I have listed up three different descriptions of the attitude kinematics corresponding to the previously mentioned three different ways of attitude representation methods. The first one is the directional cosine matrix. If the angular rotational velocity omega is provided, the time derivative of the direction cosine matrix can be obtained using this equation on the right-hand side. In a similar way, the time derivative order of Euler angles and quaternions can be obtained using the equations described below. As uh, described here, depending on which description method you are using, the time derivatives uh, can be obtained uh, from these equations. And by knowing these values, 
you can numerically integrate and propagate the satellite attitude in each time step. And therefore, it is now clear that uh, measuring accurate satellite angular velocity is very important to determine the satellite attitude. So torque-free satellite attitude motion can be calculated based on the knowledge about attitude descriptions and the satellite attitude kinematics explained in the previous uh, slides. This slide shows a simulated uh, result of attitude rotation motion of a satellite as an example. So in this example, a T-shaped satellite with such a mass distribution is analyzed. You can see that the satellite attitude can be calculated based on the kinematics equations, assuming that the angular velocity can be measured by a gyro sensor, which is attached to the satellite body. It is therefore important to know that the measured value of the angular velocity is uh, in respect to the body fixed coordinate system. In this animation, it is shown that the angular momentum vector is fixed with the uh, inertial coordinate system and the angular velocity vector and the satellite body coordinate system appear randomly rotating. So in this next example animation, you can see the torque-free rotational motion of a satellite with an oblate shape. Many satellites in the past had a cylindrical shape and then their attitude motion was something like this. You can see that the yellow cone, which is called a space cone, is inside the purple cone, which is called a body cone in this example. In this slide, you can see the torque-free motion of a satellite with a prolate shape. If the satellite body has a long uh, cylindrical shape and uh, mass distribution, the rotational motion of the spacecraft becomes something like this. So you can see that the yellow and the purple cones are now touching on the outside surface with each other. So you can uh, compare these two motions in terms of the uh, relative relationship between the body coordinate axis, angular velocity vector, and the angular momentum vector. It is indicated that uh, it is important to examine the shape of the satellite and the corresponding mass distribution carefully because uh, it influences the torque-free satellite attitude rotational motion characteristics. The next topic we need to understand about the rotational motion of a satellite is the satellite attitude dynamics, which means that we need to understand the change in satellite attitude when torque is acting on the satellite. As described in this slide below, the rotational motion of a satellite can be described uh, by the so-called Euler's equation of rotational motion. This equation is describing that the time derivative of the angular momentum of a rigid body around its uh, center of mass is equivalent to the applied torque to the system. Here, M is the torque acting on the satellite, J is the moment of inertia, which is representing the satellite's mass distribution, and omega is the angular velocity. Also, uh, this large omega is a uh, so-called skew symmetric matrix. So Euler's equation of rotational motion can also be described in other forms as listed below. Here, the H is uh, representing the angular momentum of the satellite. An attitude control system shall generate the controlling torque M so that omega and its time derivative can approach the desired values. 
as we now understand the rotational motion of the sunlight, we'd like to discuss actual determination and control in the following slides. First of all, as an example of satellite actual determination method, I'd like to introduce the triad method. The triad method is a basic method of actual determination based on the measurements of two non-parallel uh, reference vectors. By comparing observations of these vectors from uh, inertial coordinates and body coordinates, an intermediate coordinate uh, C can be defined as illustrated in this figure below using these equations. By means of this uh, intermediate coordinate C, the relationship between the observation in the inertial coordinate system and observation in the body coordinate system can be related with the, uh, with the uh, coordinate transformation matrix between the two coordinate systems as described in these equations above. From this equation, the coordinate transformation matrix can be calculated by uh, matrix multiplication as described in the equation below. Please note that the first matrix is based on the actual observation of the reference vectors using onboard sensors. And the second matrix is based on the theoretical values, which can be calculated from physical models of the vectors in the onboard computer, such as the magnetic field vector and sun vector models. Also, it is a great advantage of this method that it doesn't include uh, trigonometric functions, which makes it suitable for uh, implementation in onboard computers. After the determination of the satellite attitude, we can start uh, attitude control of the satellite. There are a wide variety of observation targets for small satellites, such as the Earth, Moon, Sun, planets, deep space, etc., as indicated in the figure below. Depending on the mission requirements, unlike in larger satellites, the attitude control system of small satellites are often required to be flexible in terms of the pointing direction. And also, small satellites are often required to conduct actual control maneuvers in an agile manner uh, through the shortest and or quickest path. Based on this background in this presentation, I introduce you to so-called quaternion uh, feedback control, or also known as large angle through maneuver. So quaternion feedback control is one of the satellite actual control method where uh, satellites need to rotate or a large angle from one actual to another. This method can realize stable actual control maneuvers without having singularity points with the rotational uh, rotation around the Euler axis. Error quotidian is uh, defined with the equation below which is indicating the difference between the current attitude and desired attitude described in quaternions. And use of, uh, and use for the feedback gain calculation. So two examples of uh, quaternion feedback control applications are illustrated below. The left one is the actual control or target pointing Earth observations. Let's take a look at this animation first. You can see that the satellite is observing a target fixed on the Earth's surface. So it is observing the Earth's surface in this way, as an example.
And the right side one is the actual control for laser communication between the ground station. It is indicated with the red line. So let's take a look at this animation. So for the laser communication, rotational angle around the target direction can be arbitrary. While uh, that angle plays an important role for the Earth observation. So the last topic of this lecture is about the functional verification of an attitude control system. For the electrical testing of the satellite system, ground testing facilities are required to conduct the electrical function test of the satellite components and system in an end-to-end -end test configuration. Software-based simulators are often utilized for hardware in the loop tests in real time in order to verify the correct functionalities of the onboard software running on the actual flight hardware. These pictures are illustrating the electrical test facility and set up for satellites developed at Tohoku University. And Onboard computer is connected to the satellite and the space environment simulator through the interface front end. This way of testing is uh, very important to achieve high performance of satellites in orbit. The diagram in this slide is illustrating the hardware and software components related with the hardware in the loop testing configuration of the simulator. The satellite and dynamics simulator for this kind of ground testing facility, which is illustrated with blue in this diagram, shall be implemented with the precise mathematical models of onboard sensors and actuators for the precise simulation and evaluation of the actual control software. The figures below are illustrating the onboard components of an actual control system, such as magnetometers, gyro sensors, sun sensors, and reaction wheels. And the corresponding graphs next to them are indicating the characteristics of implemented mathematical sensor and actuator models. Noise models shall also be implemented as precisely as possible to reproduce uh, realistic situations in orbit, orbital operation. It is also important that the precision of the sensor and actuator models shall be improved through uh, not only the ground test, but also orbital operation heritages to improve the testing accuracy for the future satellite projects. Also, full software simulators are very useful uh, facilities for the simulation of the satellite's orbital and attitude behavior. This illustration shows you an exemplary setup of a satellite simulator. The simulation process can be accelerated to conduct a large number of simulation trials. Onboard software can be developed uh, using this kind of simulation and software develop and development and verification environment very effectively. The actual satellite dynamics cannot be evaluated by software-based simulators. For this purpose, dynamic simulators are often used to evaluate a microgravity environment. They are often uh, two-dimensional uh, on a floating table, or it can be three-dimensional on a floating air bearing, as shown in this video. So this test bed is equipped with uh, reaction wheels as actuators and gyro sensors for angular velocity measurements. In this way, satellite attitude dynamics can be tested on ground 
with three degrees of freedom. Satellite system integration takes place in a bottom-up manner, starting from the hardware and software integration of each component, integration between components, and integration between the bus system and the payload. Assembly and testing shall be conducted in each integration step. This activity is sometimes called assembly integration and test, or AIT. The scope of the system level testing shall include the testing together with the ground stations, launch vehicles, and any other interfacing systems. Also, it is important to note that the satellite hardware and software functionalities shall be tested and calibrated even after the launch in order to ensure that the satellite can fulfill the mission requirements. So stable satellite operation is possible only with thorough operational planning of the attitude control system. So operational planning of the attitude control system requires careful analysis of the uh, operational scenario, including the positions, directions of celestial bodies, such as sun, earth, moon, etc., direction of the pointing targets, and direction of the attitude determination sensors with respect to their uh, field of views and obstacle avoidance angles. Attitude determination and control accuracy, power consumption, and mission duration are influenced by this planning. Finally, I'd like to conclude this lecture with a summary of the content we have covered. So an uh, introduction to CubeSat Attitude Control System is provided. It was explained that the attitude determination and control process consists of several steps, such as navigation, guidance, and control, and that uh, attitude control and orbit control influence each other. Various kinds of attitude control modes and uh, an example of attitude control system state machine diagrams with small transitions are introduced. How the components of the attitude control system were introduced, such as attitude determination sensors, attitude control actuators, and attitude control system computers. Processing tasks of navigation, guidance, and control are described in detail together with some examples of uh, reference coordinate system definitions and coordinate transformation between inertial coordinate system and geodetic coordinate system. Mathematical background of attitude determination and control algorithms were explained, including three different kinds of attitude description methods, as well as uh, satellite attitude kinematics, dynamics, and control. Functional verification aspects of the satellite attitude control system were described. Several verification and simulation infrastructures were introduced, and the importance of operational planning of attitude control systems based on the satellite and the space environment simulator was emphasized. Thank you very much for your kind attention.